So a few weeks ago, I did a video on diffusers versus cut bumpers for sort of time attack cars and stuff like that. A lot of people were asking questions about what sort of difference does a flat floor make compared to a realistic geometry. So what I'm releasing today is sort of a two part series. The first part is this part where I'm going to talk about what the effect is of a flat floor compared to a sort of non-flat and realistic floor. Um, and the second part will be where I talk about what the effect is of having a diffuser versus a cut bumper on a flat floor versus a non-flat floor. So bringing in that diffuser scenario. Now for World Time Tech over in Australia, if you want to run a flat floor, that's going to put you in pro class. So this is a little bit out of reach for most people over here, but it is still interesting to know what's going on there. For the people over in the US though, I believe that you are in many categories allowed to run a flat floor. So this information could be quite useful for you guys. Okay, so for the flat floor testing, we have our two geometries. One is our baseline geometry, which has quite a realistic floor. You can see I've modeled here. We've got an engine, we've got a representative exhaust, cutouts in the floor that are indicative of fuel tanks, things like that that you've removed. Um, and then at the back, we've got our cut bumper from the old one with a little bit of extra geometry here and a diff down there. Uh, for the flat floor itself, we've got this under tray here, which just goes a flat floor from the front. I've got a little air dam down there, and then it goes along out to the back as dead flat, and then terminates at the rear axle so I can shove a diffuser there for other testing. Okay, so let's talk results. Um, compared from the baseline to flat floor case, just by adding that flat floor there, no diffuser, so we're running a cut bumper setup with the flat floor, we're seeing sort of about a 50 kilogram at 180k an hour increase in downforce and a reduction in drag of around about 15 kilos at the same speed. So we're seeing significant increase in downforce across the car and a significant reduction in drag. Even though I've shrunk the area below the car by bringing that floor a little bit lower, I've gotten an improvement in both downforce and drag. Now I know this might not surprise most people, but it is good to have some numbers on sort of what the improvements are if you were to just shove a flat floor and not do anything else to the car's geometry. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the near field velocity. So basically this shows out all our velocity around, which is why it looks a bit blocky because it's just in the mesh cells. Um, and then as we get towards the surface, it's showing us basically how fast the air is moving just next to the surface. Because of course on the surface itself, the air will be stationary. Basically, you can imagine that if the air is fast moving near the surface, we've got an attached flow, and if it's slow moving near the surface, we've got a separated flow. So if we have a look down here, we can see that underneath our realistic geometry, that our exhaust pipe is really ruining everything quite badly for us. Down the inside of the car, this is all that deep blue color, and it means we've got all separated flows here. And including as we get to the back, that's all separated. It's really not going well. If we look at the velocity field too on sort of the side of the car, so you can see the airflow through the mid plane here, we can see that at the front, it gets a little bit of acceleration around the front, but then the engine bay causes air to be jetted downwards out of the engine bay, and this causes a flow separation on the underside of the body because you've got that air going down, tripping the flow. Now, because that flow is separated, we've only got a small region there, it sort of acts like a sort of blockage. Um, it's obviously not a physical blockage, but the air is still blocking it anyway. This diverts some of the air around to the side where we can see we still have quite a bit of wall shear going on there. But down through the center bit, we're losing out all there. So that when we get to the exhaust at the end, that's obviously got almost no wall shear on it at all. Which means that you can see the difficulty in trying to get a diffuser fit to the back here. Now obviously I've picked worst case scenario for this. Those cutouts in the exhaust pipe are really bad in terms of pretty much any car. So I hope that no one has any problems with this like they did the last video. When we compare this to the flat floor case, we can see that while having the sort of bluff front at the front, you can see that I've brought it down flat and then gone there, has resorted, resulted in a local sort of recirculation region and separation there. Um, as we move further backwards, we actually get pretty decent flow attachment. Um, the smoothening out of the airflow through this region and the fact that the exhaust doesn't penetrate down as low means that we've actually ended up with high velocity under that entire under tray and the flow is not getting too disturbed here. So you can see that it would be easier to harness this flow for a rear diffuser because it's still attached to the floor here. Obviously it's getting hit on the muffler and exhaust here so it's not doing us any favors but it's vastly superior and we can talk about that more in the next video. It's interesting to then see how this is reflected in the pressure field around the car. So if we have a look 
At the front air dam, we're getting a low pressure region created as the air kicks around into the engine bay. But there's no flat surface here to actually capture that low pressure region. We then have the spill flow out at the back, which creates a high pressure region at the back of the engine bay, and then a localized low pressure region there. Then you have not great pressure recovery as you go along back. If we compare this to the flat floor, we can see that at the start, even though we've generated a bit of a high pressure region under the bonnet there, we've got a localized low pressure region occurring at the front here because we actually have, we've got the same low pressure region as we had in the previous model, but now we actually have the surface to capture that low pressure. As we move further back, we can see that because we haven't had that spill flow or the blockage, we've actually maintained a much lower pressure across the entire duration of the floor. So we're not ending up with those weird pressure spikes, which while on a local level, they may look like they're giving you downforce, over the whole, we can see here that the net pressure across the entire floor is much lower, and that's why we're getting all the downforce. Without that blockage, and without any of the frontal surfaces also experiencing that high pressure like we did on see on the realistic floor, that's why we're getting our reduction in drag, because we're not getting high pressure building up on the front of stuff, we're just getting a clean airflow underneath the car. Again, I think most people would probably understand that this is why a flat floor works, but it's good to see it in practice improved rather than just thinking about it off the top of your head. So that's part one of the differences between a flat floor and a realistic under tray cupboard. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to get some of this CFD work done on your car, don't forget to check out www.jkfaero.com. I think you'd be surprised at how cheap and cost effective it is for your race car. Um, and if you like this video, don't forget to check out my other videos. Uh, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and hopefully, See you next time.